and gentlemen, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. If you like good beer, you'll find it pays to be curious and learn about Schlitz for yourself. And now, the Halls of Ivy. That surround us here today, and we will not forget, though we be far, far away. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. When a college student with a flair for literature or economics graduates into a high-salaried position which utilizes his natural talents, he's honored and acclaimed. But when a college athlete, endowed with swift coordination and physical stamina, graduates into professional sports for a large annual stipend, it is somehow considered degrading. Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy College, is discussing this very subject with his wife, Victoria, formerly of the London Theater. I suppose it's a matter of professional life expectancy. What is, Toddy? Uh, this thing of college athletes going in for professional football mm. or boxing or tennis to make a living after graduation. Why shouldn't they? They're fitted for it by nature, they're trained for it, and they can make far more money at it than they could by wearing gold footballs on their watch chains and being charming to prospects in a broker's office. I couldn't agree with you more, dear, so who are you arguing with? I mean, excuse me, with whom are you arguing? Uh, myself. Oh. <laughs> I often have these intra-hall debates. <laughs> They're sparsely attended and often quite dull, but I find them helpful sometimes in clarifying an issue. I take both the affirmative and the negative sides, of course. Do you just think up these debates for the mental exercise? But you need, like Mr. Heinz needs, a pickle? <laughs> no, Vicky, this subject came up today in a four-man discussion. Mr. Merriweather, Mr. Wellman, Professor Heaslip, and myself. As usual, it was Merriweather and I against the others. <laughs> Life would lose a great deal of charm, wouldn't it, if Mr. Wellman became suddenly fond of you? <laughs> yes, it would indeed, my darling. Our mutual dislike is extremely stimulating. Though I must admit my position is not very exclusive. He dislikes almost everyone. Unless they have a million dollars, of course, and are named Wellman. <laughs> uh, preferably Clarence Wellman. <laughs> He's a snob. To him, America's not a melting pot. It's a tainting. <laughs> exactly. Uh, he's a snob with a capital dollar sign, if I may phrase a coin. Oh, oh, oh. oh very good, very good. Yes. I, I'm getting to be not only a debater, but a comedian as well. I see new vistas opening before me. Lecture tours. Dr. William Hall. Two hours of fun and philosophy. Then radio, television. Would you care for my autograph, madam? Well, no, thank you, Jack Benny. <laughs> ben, Benny, I've heard that name somewhere. <laughs> Still interested in what started the discussion about college athletes going professional. Oh, yes. Well, we we were standing in front of the administration building. Hey, the and... telephone, dear. Toddy, the telephone, it's ringing. I know, but where is it? You listen that way and I'll listen this way. Next time it rings... Well, that... I got it. Good, good. Someday I'll take the scissors to that long extension cord and whack it off about 50 feet <laughs> so we can... Could... Dr. Hall's residence. Yes. Who's calling, please? Just a moment, I'll see. Toddy, it's Mr. Packard. Jeff Packard. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hall speaking, Mr. Packard. Yes, you certainly may. Yes, I thought that was it. The matter was under discussion this afternoon. In ten minutes, that'll be fine. Goodbye. Is someone coming, Toddy? Shall I fix some tea? Oh, not necessary, I think. I doubt if Mr. Packard is the tea-drinking type. He's a prize fighter. Promoter. Yes, I know. I, I know his name. <laughs> Vicky, my sweet, 
the manner in which your theatrical profession impinges on certain other professions is a constant source of amazement to me. Hutchins of Chicago may be just a rumor to you, but let someone drop the name of any individual who has ever appeared on stage, platform, ring, or soapbox, and immediately you have his life history at your fingertips. It's marvelous. <laughs> no, no. It's all show business, Toddy. I still read variety in the stage like you read the Yale Review. Anything that's box office, I've usually heard of it at least. And Mr. Packard means box office. I, um... I suppose you'd like to know what he wants to see me about? Yes. But you're not going to ask? No. Will you marry me? I did. <laughs> you know, well, one can't be married too often to a woman as discreet as you, one who has her feminine curiosity under such magnificent control. <laughs> oh, you're a wonderful girl, Vicky. You're a beautiful girl. And you have been a very good girl, so I'll tell you what Mr. Packard wants. Very <laughs> uh, good. It saves me from beating my head against the wall and screaming with frustration. But what does he want? Uh, he wants me to help him persuade young Ryan to sign with him after graduation. Terry Ryan? Isn't he studying medicine? Yes, and Dr. Davis says he's the best in his class. He was under debate earlier today in front of the administration building. Subject... Should a superlatively endowed college athlete capitalize on his publicity and prowess after graduation? Mr. Wellman and Professor Heaslip, negative. Meriwether and Hall, affirmative. You mean you were in favor of his dropping medicine for professional prize fighting? Uh, my dear girl, professional prize fighting is a redundant expression. Prize fighting is per se professional. It is for a prize, a wager, or a stake. Therefore, an amateur status is automatically ruled uh, out. Now, don't quibble and... with me, Doctor. You were in favor of Terry Ryan giving up medicine for prize fighting? No, I, I didn't say that. Mr. Wellman merely happened to be on the other side of the debate, and naturally I had to oppose him. <laughs> no, no, no. My, my personal convictions had nothing to do with it. What are your personal convictions? Uh, Vicky... I'm one of those unfortunate individuals who are either cursed or blessed, as the case may be, with the ability to see things from the other fellow's viewpoint. Well, for goodness sakes, Toddy, if he has real skill in medicine... Oh, yes, I, I know what you're going to say, and in the absence of Mr. Wellman, I agree with you. However, Ryan is a natural boxer. Fast, crafty, tough, intelligent. That's why he's intercollegiate champion. And it's quite possible that with proper handling... He can make a million dollars within a very few years. As a doctor, even a very successful doctor, he can hardly do that in 20 years. Mm, but money isn't everything. Well, the answer to that remark is, what ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I still don't know exactly where you stand, William. And if Terry Ryan is as shifty with his hands as you are with rhetoric, he'll make 12 million. Well, my position is very clear, Vicky. I want the boy to go on with medicine. Good. On the other hand, who am I to talk a young man out of acquiring a fortune? Must I recommend that he hang up his shingle and sit in his office reading his National Geographics, waiting for a five-dollar case of mumps or chicken pox? Oh, I'm not possessed of such, such well, omniscience. I that's Mr. That... Packard now. I'll let him in and then leave No, no, you no, to... no, no. I want you to stay, if you will. In the heat of an argument, I, I have but to look at you and sweet, cool reason takes over. Well, thank you. In that case, I'll hang around with the boys. Oh, what a Solomon a college president is expected to be. But when I consider that the best use the world has found for sage assistance is to flavor the stuffing in a turkey, well, all I can say this is... Day, Mr. Packard, William, Mr. Packard is here. Oh, good day, Mr. Packard. I assume my wife has already introduced us. Oh, she didn't have to, Doc. She did a show in New York and London named Give Them Tears. I had ten seats for every night during both runs. Miss Cromwell, uh, Mrs. Hall, you were terrific. Well, thank you, Mr. Packard. It, it was a very good play. And thank you also for contributing to its financial success. Well, not at all. It was mostly deductible anyway. <laughs> Entertaining clients. Will you sit down, Mr. Packard? Well, thanks. Find a cigar, Mrs. Hall? The kind you probably smoke, not at all. Oh, oh, you're safe. Made for me in Havana. A buck and a quarter apiece. And probably rolled by Carmen herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Escamillo made her quit before my time, dog. Ah, 
<laughs> you see, Toddy, the theater isn't so far from the ringside. Uh, I see. Um, you wanted to talk to me about young Ryan, Mr. Packard. Yes. You'll excuse a little shop talk, Mrs. Hall? Oh, I love shop talk. Go right ahead. Okay. Well, here's the deal, Doc. Terry Ryan's the greatest natural fighter I've ever seen work, and I've seen them all. Dynamite in both hands, brains in his head, and tiger blood in his heart. Ever see him go? Yes, Mr. Packard, I have. Well, he probably made it look so easy you weren't impressed. But take it from a guy who's been handling all kinds of fighters, champions, and palookas for 35 years. That Ryan's a class of them all. I can build him up. Give him the experience he needs. Teach him all the tricks in the book. Tricks, Mr. Packard? Tri- well, not what you're thinking, Mrs. Hall. I don't mean healing or gouging or tossing Mickeys into the water bucket. I mean the legitimate tricks a professional has to know. Ring psychology, diet, timing. My fighters get their decisions in the ring, not in my office or in the back room of a nightclub. Uh, your reputation is in your favor, Mr. Baggett. Well, that's what the boxing commission thinks, Doc. And they're a tough bunch of cookies to convince. And never mind that. What I'm trying to say is that I can make Terry Ryan world's champion in two years. You know what that means in the bank? Well, I have a general idea. And what do you want me to do? I know, but uh, I'd prefer to have you tell me for the record. On or off the record, I want you, if you will and can, to tell Ryan which way his best interests are. I got him wavering, but I, well, I just can't seem to score a knockout. He thinks I'm not a disinterested party. Believe me, he's right. You, uh, you know, of course, that Terry is studying medicine and stands very high in his class. Mrs. Hall, I know more about that kid than he does. I know the, his sleeve length, 36 inches. How many fillings he's got? One gold and two porcelain. His kindergarten teacher's police record. Ten dollars for slapping a cop. <laughs> he likes his eggs, three and a half minutes. He got that little scar on his left pinky from the first time he tried to use a scalpel. I know everything about him, including that he can be world's champion. You can see that I've done a lot of research on the boy, eh, Mrs. Hall? You certainly have. I know, but is the objective good enough? Oh, for me, there ain't a better one. Well, Doc, do I get your help, or do I have to do it without you? Mr. Packard, I I don't doubt that under your tutelage, Terry Ryan could become a champion and a millionaire. Well, then? Neither do I doubt alternatively that he could become a fine surgeon. Well, it comes down then to the question... Which gloves would I recommend for this doubly talented young man? Leather or rubber? Uh, I believe that that when God has endowed an individual with a genius, a knack, a special gift of any kind, that that individual is obligated to use a certain portion of that gift for for the good and welfare of his fellow man. To use one's talent for the sole purpose of self-advancement and self-enrichment is, to me, if not a sacrilege, at least a long stride up a blind alley. Does that answer your question, Mr. Packard? I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. We'll return to the Halls of Ivy starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Colvin in just a moment. But first, let's hear one man's story of how a couple found three new friends by meeting two people. Well, my wife and I moved out to a little ranch-type home on a quiet street in the suburbs a short time ago. We were in the midst of unpacking and putting things away when our doorbell rang. It was the couple next door. We invited them in, excusing ourselves for the unsettled appearance of the house. Lay sat down, and his wife began to tell my wife when the mail was delivered, which laundry was the most reliable, and what milkman to take from. And meanwhile, I was apologizing to my neighbor for not having a thing to serve. At that, he brightened up like a man with an idea, excused himself, and went next door. In a minute, he was back with a smile on his face and a small brown carton labeled Schlitz Beer under his arm. It was one of those six-pack cartons I had seen advertised. Well, I led him to the kitchen where he opened four cans of Schlitz, poured them into glasses I dug out of a barrel, and passed them around. 
Well, in no time at all, we were chatting like old friends. At the same time, I was making an important discovery. All the good things I had heard about the taste of Schlitz were true. Before that afternoon ended, my neighbor and I had a bowling date for the following Thursday, and my wife had an invitation to play bridge the same night. As our new neighbors left the house, my wife remarked how nice it was to have made two good friends her first day. Three, I corrected, draining the last drop from my glass. It's easy to see why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder they call Schlitz the beer that made Milwaukee famous. It's somewhat later the same afternoon as we return to the Halls of Ivy, just in time to hear Victoria say... I called Terry Ryan, Toddy. He'll be over in a few minutes. Thank you, dear. Did you tell him why? No, but I imagine he can guess. Mr. Packard has been quite in evidence around the campus, you know, and he's not what you might call self-effacing. No, he's a careful bull in a shop full of heavy china. Uh, Vicky, I sometimes wonder how far a man in my position should go in steering a young man's career in any particular direction. Well, but darling, you're merely advising. You're, you're not tricking him into anything. Mm. I only wish there was some fairly decent way I could uh, trick him into... Uh... Hmm. Toddy? Uh, yes, Victoria? There's a gleam in your eye. It's the same one you get when we play canasta. <laughs> when you're about to go out concealed with three naturals. <laughs> what are you cooking up, Doctor? Uh, my dear girl, to hear you talk, one would think that I habitually resort to animal cunning and shady practices. <laughs> I assure you that whatever I might be contemplating, it will be purely a matter... Well, purely is good enough for me, dear. I had visions of you tampering with the steering gear of Mr. Packard's automobile. Uh, I'll let Terry Ryan uh, Vicky, in. Vicky, 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 keep him out there a moment, will you? Till I can make a phone call? Oh, well, I haven't time to run upstairs and put my best eyelashes on, but I'll do what I can. Hello, maintenance. This is Dr. Hall speaking. Uh, let me speak to the uh, head gardener, please. Hello, Albert. Dr. Hall. Can you locate Beans Phillips quickly? Good. I want him to be trimming the hedge in front of the medical building at... Uh, let me see. At 3.40, exactly. Well, I don't care if it was trimmed today. Have him trim it again. I'll explain later. Thank you, Albert. Th and, I, and I might add that you have the grounds looking beautiful. Yeah. 3.40, exactly. Right. Goodbye. Ah, all you schemer, you plotter, you master of intrigue. You were born out of your time, you rascal. You, you talk of the medishes and the bullshit. William, yes, Terry Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Glad to see you. Sit down, won't you? Thank you, sir. Uh, Vicky, don't, don't go. Well, I don't want to be in the way. Oh, you're never in the way. And I think Mr. Ryan will agree that you lend a certain charm and distinction to any gathering. Mr. Ryan agrees to that with a fast pulse and a recognition of the understatement of the week. <laughs> oh, thank you, gentlemen. And I must take care you don't talk at all like a pugilist. Well, if... Gene Tunney can love Shakespeare. I guess I can handle the dictionary. <laughs> Doctor, is this about Jeff Packard? Uh, in a way, yes. He's talked to you, I suppose. <laughs> he certainly has. With his hands on my shoulders and looking deeply into my eyes. He, he paints a very pretty picture. Yeah, we know. He tried to sell it to us. In a very rich frame. Oh, sure. He's already got me taking my championship profits to the bank in an armored wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I was officially invited to this meeting... I'd like to ask a question, Terry. How do you feel about it? Well, frankly, Mrs. Hall, I, I'm weakening. If you can call it weakening to walk into a chance for a million bucks and a little piece of glory. Terry, as an intelligent man, you, you have undoubtedly given this choice of professions a great deal of thought. A career in the ring with money, excitement, headlines and fame. Versus applauding respectability. Establishing yourself in medicine and surgery. That's about it, Doctor. And I know what your advice would be. Stay with medicine. Yes. But, of course, I, I'm prejudiced. I'm a teacher. 
and have a respect amounting almost to reverence for the profession of medicine. Conversely, I view a prize-fighting career as a gamble. Oh, I know, in, in your case, the odds are with you. But to me, the good you can do with your rare gift for diagnosis and the surgical skill you've already evidenced far outweighs the rewards of a boxing championship. Maybe this is treason, Terry, but what if you didn't get to be champion? In a few years, you'd have lost out in medicine and it would be too late to do anything about it. Well, sure, there's, there's that, of course, but I don't plan on staying with it. Packard says he can get me the championship in a few years. Well, if I get it, I'll retire from the ring, I mean. And then, back to medicine. Do you think you'd come back, Terry? Wouldn't it be just one more bout, just one more purse? Oh, mind you, I, I admit I'm arguing from a sense of... of uh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Hall's residence? Who? Ann Arbor, Michigan? Oh, yes, 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 Long indeed. Long-distance yes. game, Terry. He has them going all over the country. Huh? I'm glad you told me. I'll put my first $10,000 in AT&T. Hello. Yes, Rudy, I'm ready. A pawn to the King's Bishop's Four. That's right, yes. I'll call you back at this time one week from tonight. Collect. Ha, ha, ha. Will one week be enough for you, Rudy? <laughs> Get some outside advice if you wish. I don't mind. <laughs> Goodbye, Rudy. Uh, that was Professor Coastart at Michigan. If he loses this game and one more, he owes me a first edition of South Wind. Uh, play chess, Terry? No, little doctor. I'm not much on strategy, though. Anybody who can think four moves ahead is me beat. And you don't think you'll meet any prize fighters who will think four moves ahead? <laughs> well, the fighters don't do the thinking, Mrs. Hall. The managers do that. And I'd have Jeff Packard, and he's at least six moves ahead of every other promoter in the business. He's... Oh, I see you looking at your watch, Doctor. If I overstay... Oh, no, 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 not at all, Terry. It's just that I have an appointment with Dr. Chester Davis at four. Uh, frankly, it's to talk about you. I seem to be quite a fascinating topic these days. Tell me, is the future of one student worth all the discussion, Doctor? I can answer that, Terry. Yes, it is, to my husband. He somehow doesn't think of the student body as a production line. You know, assemble them, move them along and get rid of them. He seems to think they're people, individuals. The future of every student here at Ivy is the most important thing in his life. It is his life. And now I'd like to hear just a smattering of applause because I haven't made a speech in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, no applause from you, will you? Uh, when the flag goes by, my darling, one holds one's hat over one's heart oh. in silence. <laughs> You can't applaud with one hand. <laughs> and like the passing flag, the simple truth requires just simple honor and respect. Well, I retract the applause and take off my hat, Mrs. Hall. Well, one tribute as good as another to me, I'm sure, gentlemen. But uh, trained as I was, I have more confidence in a noisy reaction. <laughs> and if, if you're seeing Dr. Davis at four, Toddy, you better get going. I think so, too. Come on, Terry, walk over with me, will you? <laughs> Doctor, seriously, don't you think it's possible for me to make a lot of money in the ring and then come back, finish studying medicine? Possible, yes, but highly improbable. Oh, why, sir? Well, because procrastination is not only the thief of time, it's the murderer of ambition. I have it on good authority that you have a fighting heart. It's entirely up to you what you wanted to fight for. Yours is the... Oh, hello, Beans. Uh, hi, hiya, Doc. Hey, hey, w what do you think of that, Al? But I clipped this hedge perfect this morning. Now he's got me clipping it again. He m must be getting absent-minded or something. Huh? No, I, I think he's just a perfectionist. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> uh, Beans, this is Terry Ryan, the intercollegiate boxing champion. Glad to know you, Beans. Yeah, well, likewise, kid. I seen you fight a couple of months ago. You're, you're good. You you take my advice. You go professional. Only look. Yeah? You, not so much with the left. It's great, see? But you got two hands. See, I'm I'm a fighter myself. Only I'm I'm working here till they get me a good match. I'll wake up with you some morning. Then when I'm... 
champion heavy, I'll bring you along, see? Well, thanks a lot. Now, that's very kind of you, Beans. Now, if you'll excuse us... Wait a minute, Doctor, please. Beans, uh... Say, uh, are you Beans Phillips that fought Abe Morton back in... Well, uh, a while ago? Yeah, the the same, kid. I'm going to get a rematch, too. I know what I need now when I get him into the ring. But Morton died six years ago. He did? Well, they'll get me a go with somebody else, then. You you will find a kid. You you got the belt for it. Look, you meet me in a gym sometime. I'll give you a few tips. That's to... a very good idea, Beans. But we're due at the medical building. Take care of yourself. Yeah, I, I always do, Doc. That's why I like working outdoors like this. There's plenty of air. I'm keeping in shape for a match with Morton. I'll see you around, boy. You bet. Oh, and Beans. Yeah? The next time you meet Morton... Good luck. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. That's a nice kid, Doc. Bring him around again. I got to get back to work now. My muscles stiffen up. I keep moving. Always keep moving. And that was all. We never got to the medical building... Brian suddenly remembered an engagement and left. I called and apologized to Dr. Davis. But, Toddy, you still don't know. I mean, if Terry's... Oh, he, he's, he's going on with medicine. Did he say so? Yes. But it wasn't necessary, my darling. If you could have seen his face when he realized that he was talking to Beans Phillips, one of the great fighters of yesterday, and realized also that this man with the broken hands and the scar tissue must have had a similar decision to make at one time... Well, it was quite convincing. Mm. It was also quite a coincidence your meeting poor old Beans that way, wasn't it? Yes, 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 wasn't it? (laughs) Was it? (laughs) Uh, No, dear, it it wasn't. (laughs) That's what I thought. Well, congratulations, Doctor. A clean victory. Good generalship. Uh, I'm glad it worked. As I have often remarked, all stratagems are not necessarily gems of strategy. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that horticulture has lost the decision to medicine. Horticulture? Uh, gardening. Madison Square Gardening. Cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of cauliflowers, my darling, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> I was curious. I tasted it. Now I know why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. No wonder it's the beer that made Milwaukee famous. And now, here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. And good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Be sure to see Ronald Coleman's latest picture, Champagne for Caesar. We'll be seeing you next week at this time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. In our cast tonight, Sheldon Leonard played Beans Phillips, Ken Christie was Jeff Packard, and Stacey Harris was Terry Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, the future has a way of sneaking up on all of us. But there is a way of accounting for the future in advance by a method of sure, automatic saving today. And there is no surer method of saving and saving with profit than through the purchase of United States savings bonds. Whatever your hope for the future, a home or a business of your own, a college education for your children, it can be brought to reality by saving. Buy United States savings bonds today. Tonight's script was written by Don Quinn. Our music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ken Carpenter speaking. Oh, we love the halls of ivy that surround us here today. And we will not forget. Coming up, it's the Great Gildersleeve on NBC.